Hello, welcome back. We're back. Uh, we're live, pal. We're talking about we're Demolition Man, 1993's Sylvester Stallone classic. Wesley Snipes classic. What is going on with this character? This very movie. bizarre. This, this movie, movie is crazy. Is so it's so crazy. It's so good, and it's so like has bits and pieces of really good stuff, like really good jokes. You said something was funny throughout the movie, and I never found it. <laughs> the sh- He's talking the about seashells. That's not the seashell the toilet seashell. thing. Do <laughs> you have to understand? Not the entire movie. <laughs> like yes, the seashells. <laughs> He doesn't understand the sh- seashells, but you also how to wipe to his under- ass with three seashells. But you also have to understand is Sylvester Stallone, John Spartan is walking around this entire movie with a swampy, dirty ass with a <laughs> with a shark. He is something more, more than a fart. Thing. He is he poopsy walking. daisy, then he couldn't figure out how to. He's literally the entire movie is just poop in his butt. The entire just completely. Messed his pants, and he can't. That's why he's so angry. Like the running joke of that is so good. It goes from the beginning to the very last line. The yeah, last they line thought it was movie. that good that they, they did yes. the movie on it. They, <laughs> they so thought it was funny. that good. It's so funny to have like three seashells. What does it mean? <laughs> what do you do with them? How does it work? It's just like stupid stuff like that. I like I had sex too. Oh man. How creepy that was where she's just like, let's have sex with these. So there's (laughs) mind bending weird shit. This movie in one part is so like comedically funny. And then other, it's just like. So so serious. So serious. And it's so good. I love this movie. Absolutely love it. Would you rate this? Did, so, did you see there? this movie as a kid? Like, yes. You, have you seen this before? Yes, I have not seen it. I saw it as a kid, okay. and not How, liking it. But like I, that's super young. Ninety-three. Like, yeah, a lot of the jokes are like seven? meta film jokes. No, I wasn't seven. I was nine. Um, nine ninety-three. That's how math. Ninety-three, works. probably. But then I didn't see it in theaters. I would have seen it. Let's I was say gonna say 11? I mostly the thing about I remember about this movie is the super awesome VHS cover of their like face off and always being the movie rental store, which back in the day, I think it was it must have been there right before I moved because there's a video rental store right by my house. And I used to be able to get what was, was it? Little, Blockbuster? No, Hollywood? it was like a, it was a corner store. Oh. And they had a little movie section and I used to have a card and I used to be able to get whatever I wanted out of there unless it was fucking crazy, you know, Hellraiser shit or whatever and then they make me return it. So I remember walking by that movie all the time. Or they, I don't know, they must not have let a child rent like crazy movies. I doubt. That, it's a, this is an R-rated movie. Right. So I used to go in the little back thing and rent create weird movies all the time. But I remember walking by this one and Necessary Roughness. Those are the two. Yeah. I always was trying to rent Necessary Roughness, which is a rated R football movie, and this. And they would never let me do it. But I thought it looked cool on the box art. And I still hadn't seen it up until yesterday. <laughs> That's how long it took me to out. see this movie. You've been missing it. I have missed out. Yeah, I must have been like 11 when I saw this. All I knew about it was that it was not, you know, man. Not in not, Man. Close. Not. Close. Very similar. So, because we're in the far flung year of 1996. <laughs> 1996, where within three years from 93 to 96, all hell breaks loose. Something terrible has happened. Yeah. LA Wesley is, Snipes has taken over LA. LA is on fire. Insane. The Hollywood sign on fire somehow. Someone individually lit the ball on fire. Yep. <laughs> individually lit the ball on fire. As we know from whatever that crappy movie Wally made us watch where they sing songs up there. Yep. <laughs> um, it's easy to oh, get that's to. That's right. That's right. That awful movie. Um, we zoom into uh, 
cockpit of a helicopter and a pilot remembers when the airlines could actually land in LA. Like wow. what has happened? That's how fucked up it is. What it can't even have has air- happened. Airlines <laughs> are running now during a fucking pandemic. How <laughs> yes. more fucked up could it be? The thing is, is this must have this must have been written right after the LA riots, yeah, which it I believe totally was ninety like, two. Yeah. Um, and that was just like they're just like, well, things aren't gonna get better. Things are just gonna keep getting worse. Kind of right. Yeah. You're kind of right. <laughs> well, LA, you can live in LA. You can't if you're a bus driver, you can drive your bus around in LA. Without um, being taken hostage. Yeah. By a crazy uh, guy in overalls. Yes. Uh then uh Stallone pops in and says, Well, we're we're here to do a good deed. Turns out a bus full of hostages were taken, and he's got a pretty good idea who has them. Simon Phoenix. Good name. Mm-hmm. Very good name. But this not, is I don't very, know. both of their names are so John pro wrestling. Spartan. They're pro wrestling names, if I've ever yes. heard them. Yes. Simon Phoenix and, and John Spartan. I can are. just see Simon Phoenix being a wrestler, and his gimmick is he says, Simon says DDT. Yes. Like, yes. I can totally see that being gimmick. Yep. <laughs> Uh, the chopper hovers over a burning building while Stallone heads back to the back of it and uh, opens up the rear hatch. He murmurs, send a maniac to catch a maniac. <laughs> send a maniac to catch a maniac. And then jumps out screaming Phoenix. Phoenix! <laughs> allowing him complete his Alerting everyone of his presence. Everyone. Um, They're shooting at the helicopter while it's Yes, flying. that's true. That's so true. they know he's there already. To be, um, to be truly honest, uh, Stallone drops down several feet, dashes across the rooftop, dodging gunfire. Um, he opens it up, and there's an elevator shaft. Uh, he slides down the cable while gunmen above him shoot at him. Uh, Sloan bursts through some windows and then dashes through a hallway, taking out thugs as he finds them, all while someone watches via video monitor. Sloan asks Phoenix where the hostages are. And Phoenix says, fuck you. Oh. Stallone threatens threatens to shoot Phoenix. And, and so and before he got there, he punched a bunch of holes in some gasoline. Yep. He's and, got uh, the whole place rigged to blow. It shoots. And so Stallone threatens to shoot Phoenix. Phoenix lights a cigarette and quips, is it cold in here? Is it just me? Oh. And then drops... He's crazy. Gun. He's crazy. He drops the cigarette in the gasoline, and all Sly does. Sly does a burn up. He just his hunt. His gun gets very hot, and he drops it. Drops the gun. It's too hot. Too hot. The gun. Can I get that? They tussle and fight. Stallone kicks his ass and then carries him out of the building as it explodes. The building, like yeah. Completely ras to the ground. We don't see him like get out before it explodes either. He, yeah, no. It explodes. And they don't show him exit. And then the next scene, he's out. Yep. Um, and then I get very confused. Sly's uh, boss shows up. It starts up the classic angry boss cliche. He calls him John. His name's John Spartan. And Stallone defends himself, saying the bus passengers weren't in the building because he did a thermal check. He did the thermal check. He did a thermal check, guys. Before him, the firefighter. And so then the firefighter's like, yeah, there's a bunch of dead bodies in here. <laughs> <laughs> Which the firefighters got to the scene and immediately found just a They're pile all dead. Of, they're all dead. Yeah. And no time well, wait, to put out the wouldn't, fire. Wouldn't they already be dead, technically, if he did a thermal check? Well, they would have already been dead. That's the thing. But mm. then these firefighters in 1996 went right to the dead bodies. Don't put out the fire. They just find dead bodies. Don't take the bodies out. Just locate them. <laughs> no, nope, just locate them. Um, firefighters. So Phoenix cuffed claims he begged John to stop, but he didn't care. It looks like John is going to prison with Simon. We find John handcuffed and dressed in what looks to be a white plastic bag being escorted <laughs> to a weird place. A hefty bag. John uh, supposed supposed to have been found guilty of thirty counts of involuntary manslaughter, <laughs> to, to, to seventy years of crime. He didn't kidnap these guys. Well, he, he's he in for building. thirty years for just not no, knowing that they 70. were seventy. Seventy years. Seventy years for, for involuntary 
Yeah, he blew this, him up. This, or comparing this to Jurassic Park, like science wise, is like they're trying to do Jurassic Park like cool future science, and yeah. it's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's not so, cool. It's really weird. So Jurassic Park be, is super cool. So he'll be brainwashed into becoming a model citizen. Yes, he's gonna be brainwashed. They Forgot strip about that. Spartan and put him in a pit that fills up with a thick, clear liquid. Thick, and viscous then, liquid. <laughs> yes, thick, very <laughs> thick. Um, and then they just insert this glowing blue blue ball, and the ball drops, and Spartan and instantly we get to see, frozen. We get to see that um, that's uh, man ass. Yes, that's that sweet, uh, sweet butt. Used to be, gets, I used to get so excited when FX would be like nudity on this week's shield like oh cool oh, all right man. and it was always man butt chickless butt chickless butt. butt come on fx so we cut to the year 2032 and things are just going fine at the old crypto pen <laughs> um the warden smithers gets an alert on his it's- tablet <laughs> which <laughs> Which they, this accurately predicted tablets in the future. Of course. He gets a video call from Lieutenant Lee, Lenina Huxley. Oh my God. And she's just calling to check up on how every, how's everything going. How's the freezing prison? How's the, Everybody's how's still frozen. Going? How's everything going? They're all still frozen. Everyone's still frozen. They're all sadly. naked. We look at them. And she seems to want chaos. And She wants chaos. She truly she wants, wants chaos. chaos. Um, no, she, makes, she doesn't. She makes her way back to makes her way to the police station, uh, to Ethical Plaza. Of course, the future Ethical. is fucking lame. Let me just say that right now. Ethical the future Plaza. is lame. Well, the biggest thing about this is, so now they're in this place called what is it? San Angeles. San yeah. Angeles. Yep. What? And it was destroyed. Something happened in 2010 with a big earthquake. The big one. An what? earthquake killed everyone. What happened to the rest of the country? <laughs> all we know is just nothing. We don't know. It's going to the ocean. It's it, all gone. It's it was the sinning. opposite of what we thought. Yes. Like we kept thinking California was going to fall in, but the rest of the country fell the in. The rest there. of the country <laughs> fell in. Okay. It's just St. Angeles. Okay. That's the entire America, St. Angeles. So, right. So, um, a device pops out of the lawn and sprays graffiti on the what? ethical plaza sign that says, Life is hell. <laughs> oh, man. But the sign has an automated okay. anti graffiti failsafe. Of course. It so, it doesn't matter. Pain. So, what, what, what? You're wasting your resources. <laughs> Um, How do you have this technology? We see you're eating rats later, but yes. you have the technology to build these graffiti machines. What the fuck? That only Sylvester Stallone sees. Yeah, no one else ever notices them. Nope, nope. Um, the spring they device. They eat rats at the same time. The spring device shorts out, and of course, it's Dennis Leary. <laughs> that son of a bitch. Of course, Dennis Leary. Obviously, Dennis Leary lives in a sewer. He lives in a sewer. Um, Huxley meets a fellow cop. Perfect and, character for him. Yes. Huxley meets a fellow cop, and instead of shaking hands, they perform uh, this weird hand-waving ritual because germs are now gross in the future. Right. Germs are bad. Having uh, physical, uh, what was it? Exchanging of saliva uh, or fluids. solids? Fluids. Yeah. Exchanging of fluids is terrible. This movie. Um, Every time I watch something, they have these weird germ things, and it makes me upset. Like, yeah. damn it! Just shoot people. I don't want to talk about germs for one minute. The chief yells at her for wanting chaos. Uh, Huxley. The is chief, a, who is uh, the warden of Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank, yes. Which is funny because he made this before he made Shawshank. Oh, you yeah. very rarely see that with this dude, but. Yeah. He's the um, supreme dickhead actor and everything. So uh, Huxley has her office and. It's very 90s. It's very It's cool. very like chilies. It looks like a chili <laughs> in there. She's there's shit a, all over the walls. There's a Red Hot Chili Peppers poster. She has a Lethal Weapon 3 poster. Of course, the most it's 20th so century meta. thing. The most 20, 20th century thing. Lethal That's weapon. not even a good lethal weapon. <laughs> nope. Um <laughs> Why'd you ra- pick that? Obviously they're made by this. They're made by the same. Yep. 
like uh, film company, obviously. She has a Raiders helmet. Of, uh, now Los Angeles, uh, no, Las Vegas Raiders. Mm. Um, and a samurai sword. And the thing is, is that she's fascinated by the 20th century, which was only 30 years ago. Not long ago. <laughs> no, not that long ago. We have ago. museums dedicated to how fucked up the 20th century was. <laughs> it was literally 30 years ago. It was literally like there's a whole generation of people that we meet that are still <laughs> alive, that are still alive, still working as police officers, still working, who <laughs> were alive, very alive, which we would will hopefully be knock on wood yeah. in 2040, 2032. It's 2032, 2032, it's 10 years away. Um, gonna be we'll rough, see. we'll see. Uh, you said yourself you weren't going to make it to 2032 yeah. a minute ago <laughs> um, before we started recording. Smithers. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so then uh, Simon gets wheeled. So then they're back in the cryo pen. Simon gets wheeled into the warden's office. Smithers starts talking. And then he's just, um, you know, Wesley the Snipe is clearly just fucking around and speaking in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, and he knows the codes to everything. He knows somehow. the code, says teddy bear. And then the results in the tab, the shackles pop off. Simon kicks Smithers into the desk. Kung Fu is one of the guards. And now he's really good at fighting. And he doesn't know how he got so he knew the code. Um, he rips mm-hmm. out Smithers' eyeball and yep. sets himself free. Yep. Um, back at police headquarters, oh, a, boy. A 187 is reported. And they're like, what? What's a one eight seven? They don't know what murder is. I will give I will give the guy credit for this. Like, yeah, it, it's kind of lame. You can't swear or anything, but LA has not had a murder in twenty two years. That's me something. Wow. So Ted Huxley looks it up and finds it's not a murder. But they have to look it up. They have to look it up. And it's not a mur- It's not just a murder or a homicide. It's a murder, death, kill. Same oh word, God. three times over. I it's, like how the computer is like one eight seven one eight seven at first, and they're like, "What does that mean?" And then they look it up. But then, any time after that, they're like, "A murder, death, kill us. A murder, <laughs> death, kill has been done. A murder, death, kill." Like, why didn't you say that? Murder, death, kill. Where the great Nick Gage got his his catchphrase from? The king, yeah. king of MDK. Yeah. King of MDK, the king of <laughs> murdering and death and killing. <laughs> the repetitious word of murder, death, kill. It's because a murder. Because the, so demolition man mm-hmm. is the reason that we have yes. Nick Gage. Yeah, essentially. Because a mur- you can't if you kill someone, it's a murder. But if yeah. there's a, if there's Wait, a murder what? with a kill. <laughs> But it's all the same word. It's just like, who thought that word? And okay, so and there, yep, there hasn't been one since since 2010. Uh, Smithers dies, and half the cops look like they're about to cry while Rob Schneider pukes. Sadly, Rob Schneider doesn't have a big role in this. Movie. No, but he's in it. He's, he's there. In it. Um, Chief Earl comes in and finds there's been three unsanctioned life terminations, and that's the other thing is the way they talk in the future. And not yeah. even the future. <laughs> in, in 10 the, years? In 10 years, everything has changed completely. They're, completely the way people... They're so fucking grossed out by a murder. They can't they even comprehend. Unsanctioned life termination. Uh, how can we Why do we for, need cops in 2032 then if uh, there's no issues at all? Huxley recovers first and accesses the prison records to see that Simon Phoenix's name comes up. And then uh, the dude there, I forget his name, is it's like, yeah, Simon the old, Phoenix. The, the old, old wise guy. black guy. Yep. <laughs> because it's Cardinal 1993, we have those. Simon was put on ice before they started low jacking. Oh, I know him. Because he was the, was he the co- helicopter pilot? Yes, he was the helicopter pilot. So he was... So what was world like to him? So he was in what his mid twenties during that helicopter thing. 18? Now he's thirty years late, eighteen. And he's a helicopter, helicopter pilot. <laughs> like a, a, he's very old. He's like super old. 
but let's say he's so if he was 30, he's 60? Is he's that what you're old. saying? He's not that old. He's got a gray he's beard and stuff. He, they so, make him look a lot older than... And, I think it's a different actor. Like, what is he... Well, yeah, it's a different actor, but what does he think of the world now? Like, it must be horrible. Like, saying unsanctimonious life termination. Unsa- unsanct- He's just unsanct- getting those checks. I think that's what his. Yeah. He's ready to retire. He's just getting those checks until he's. Um, they, we see Simon's record of control substance, petty theft, assault, manslaughter, DUI. How about uh, he took over fucking Los Angeles? Rape, murder, one, smuggling, inciting riots, counterfeiting, extortion, robbery, and all of that was just in 1984. Oh. More MDKs are reported, and uh, Huxley figures out Simon has stolen a car and tracks it to the corner of Wilshire and Santa Monica. They have so much technology yet they can't catch this guy. Nope. Uh, Simon kicks the dude off his computer, and he's the one who's getting the like the affirmation, be like, "You bring great joy, joy to people." Joy, joy. <laughs> a voice in Phoenix's head tells him to kill Dennis Leary. <laughs> what? <laughs> He tell, uh, what's his name? Edgar Friendly. You need to kill, kill a Dennis Leary. Simon finds out uh, there are now guns in the museum. Um, cops show up and they're like, uh, maniac, please lay on the, f- on the ground. And then he, uh, Simon Phoenix, beats him up to some funky music. To like a DJ scratching. Yeah, which That's is great. like, where did that come from? I don't know, but it's fun. <laughs> uh, I wish cue... a whole movie of DJ scratching fight scenes happened. Uh, then we cut to a weird video call conference call where kind of you know zoomish it's kind of predicted mm. zoom conference calls wait is that the one where they have like the the computers and the chairs that yes. turn yes um that reminded then, me of like a shitty version of the captain america winter soldier where they, they oh, had like yes, the holograms yes, yes. of the people in the chairs yes um and the conference call is about Dennis Leary, Edgar Friendly. Fucking Dennis Leary. And we meet uh, Cocto, Cocto, who is the savior of San Angeles. He's like the uh, architect or whatever. Yes, he like brought San Angeles back and he is. Um, he's, he's creepy co- as fuck. Yeah. Uh, expresses his horror to Captain Earl about. What uh, Simon Phoenix did, and that uh, Simon Phoenix begins dismantling. I don't know, just basically like six of his guys. Now at the moment, he just doesn't know how many became NDKs. Uh, Cocto tells Earl he's got every confidence in him to do everything to track down the criminal. Um, <clears throat> police watches a montage of videos of Spartan. Um, He's kicking name and kicking names and taking butts. Yeah, no, kicking asses and yeah, he kicks in a lot of names and takes a lot of butts. Uh, the best I like one, how they had a highlight video of him. Yes, and the best one is when John has just rescued a little girl, and the reporter yes. asks how he can justify blowing up seven million dollar mall when the girl's ransom was only twenty five thousand, and the little girl goes, "Fuck you, lady." A little girl. Yes. So funny. So back. Back to the crypto prison where John Spartan is thawed out. Oh, man. Thawed out and despite Earl's misgivings. But it seems the police charter allows for John to be given a limited parole and reinstatement as a cop. So you're going to unfreeze him. Yes, unfreeze him. Huxley starts explaining to John that the year is 2032. And he asks how long he's been under Asks about his wife. Everyone's yeah. everyone you know everyone or you loved know is dead. Long dead. Hey, it wasn't that long. long I was only in here for how yeah. long is he in there? For thirty years. Thirty years. Well, only here for thirty years. Why is well, everyone dead? The Earthquakes. Wife, he the only per, per, person he knew was his wife and kid. Earthquakes. And they're all dead. Earthquake. The big earthquake that killed his wife, but his daughter's still alive. We is she? See his, we no. Yep. Because we never we'll learned. Later. What, is that a sequel we never got? Maybe. Demolition so, Man 2? John is told Simon Phoenix is on the loose and uh, that immediately catches his attention. John asks for a cigarette and finds out they're now illegal. And so it's alcohol, caffeine, contact sports, 
meat, gasoline, non-educational toys, and anything spicy. Anything um, spicy. And then we get, he gets in a fight with the swearing machine. Yes, yes. But you're not allowed to swear. You get a you're ticket where you have to yep. pay a fine yep. if pay you swear. Fine. And you know what? I appreciate that because every time someone swears in this movie, you could hear that thing go off. Every time. It gets like it gets old. It gets old after a while. It's a funny joke for a while, but yeah, yeah, it it it, it never gets old. Never gets old. The, can you, Bill? The, does the swearing machine ever get old? The oh, devilish man. The swearing machine? I thought the swearing machine got old, but Mike doesn't think that. I like it. I mean, when he was wiping his butt with it, that was good fun. I guess that's the one time he wipes mm. his butt. Yeah. He wipes his butt with it. Um, I feel like I want to stop everything and find out what just happened, but let's keep pressing <laughs> on. <laughs> um, we see John arrive in his new uniforms. and McMillan His new SS Germany? Yes. Why? Why in the future does everyone dress as a Nazi German officer? Yeah. Uh, I'm done in 10 years. I guess. Stallone, Germany takes back over, I guess. And here Stallone whispers that uh, Huxley, they're all, they're all out of toilet. You're all out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> this starts a round of amused comments on how John Smart doesn't know how to use the three she- seashells. Which, why wouldn't one of them be like, oh, hey, I can show you. It's easy. Let me they show think you it's to, hilarious that he doesn't know. The dude's been up. frozen for 30 fucking years. Can somebody get this guy proper toilet training? At least that. Um, His fucking kid and wife are dead from earthquakes. God damn it. Uh, so John asks what happens to Zach, who was the pilot. He explains he got old and was grounded. He says, shit, damn, you're a good, fl- you're a good flyer in the wall mount at profanity ticket dispenser ejects two fines. Um, Phoenix is at the museum and then, so he's at the museum, walks up to the directory and is extremely racist. Yep. <laughs> That's a lot of racism in this movie. Yep. Very awful to children. Yep. To children. Bad racism in this movie. He finds the directory that ultimately leads him to the Hall of Violence. <laughs> Hall of Violence. Hall of Violence. Where they have guns where and bullets. Yeah, they guns. all work together. Real guns. Real, real guns. Bullets. Real bullets. Like, uh, Huxley and Garcia head out with, uh, with John to the police cruiser. John seems sad. Is that Benjamin Brandt? Yes, it is. So, um, I have a lot of questions about what he does later. Huxley decides to play some music and tunes into the oldies. Station. Oh my god, the oldies, all the old commercials. Oh my god, and there's soon everybody uh, today listens to hot dog jingle. The songs that are 30 years old are so much more popular than current songs <laughs> yes. sometimes in today's society. So, why are commercials more exciting? Right. And that's an, this is another thing that they keep, they stick to because later on in the rest of the, yes, now, in the restaurant, it was it a Taco Bell or Pizza Hut? Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Oh, yes. It it Taco Bell. Bell. I like how Taco, Taco Bell. Bell will never die like a cockroach. It won't in ever In the original go away. movie, it was. Me is outlawed, but Taco Bell's okay. In certain cuts, it was Pizza Hut. Oh, um, really? Yes. I mean, I fucking um, loved Pizza Hut as a kid. Because in the now pizza, I love Taco Bell more. In the, but. In the Taco Bell, um, the guy singing Bell. the Jolly Green Giant song. Wow. If I had to listen to the Jolly Green Giant song or a current Drake song, I'll take Jolly Green Giant. Oh, okay. Wow. But if you had to listen to Led Zeppelin or a commercial from the 70s, what would you pick? Oh, of course, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> so Phoenix is approached by a custodian who asks him what his boggle is. What's your boggle? <laughs> Phoenix is annoyed, and uh, then uh, something occurs to him. He asks the man how much he weighs. Phoenix then throws the man through the glass. Mm. Phoenix casually kills two attendants while the computer helpfully explains the gun needs a couple of minutes. He gets oh, his, his new like, gun. New awesome gun. Yeah, and it needs a couple minutes to uh, charge up. Uh, the cops arrive, and John sp- spots another 
periscope that pops out of the ground but disappears. Once again, the only person noticed. Dan Slurry fucking around. Inside, Simon loads up a duffel bag. Uh, he borrows from a ra- mannequin that he calls Rambo. He then Which is decides, funny because yes. so Stallone is Rambo. Yep. Then decides it's time to leave. John, sna- uh, John Spartan snags a sawed-off shotgun and pistol, and the two exchange gunfire. Phoenix tries to ambush John by hiding behind the museum directory, but the directory is right next to a glass floor that um, is a section these- of old L.A., Gotta love these old glass floors in movies where you just shoot the floor out. Yep, they shoot the floor out. Phoenix uh, falls through, but he shoots the glass out from under John. And he shoots the glass. The two tussle, uh, one sided fight. Uh, Phoenix is now a badass. John's on the rope until he gets his hand on an old TV at set and swings it around. Um, and, and so then uh, Phoenix is. Yep, he electrifies the pool of water Phoenix is standing in. Phoenix is knocked back to where his favorite gun is, and he almost blows up John. Um, Phoenix retreats up to the surface. Coincidentally, Cocteau and Bob. 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 Bob from Beetlejuice. Yes, Bob from Beetlejuice. Just then, Phoenix pops up through a skylight with his duffel bag. He tries to shoot Cocteau, but weirdly he cannot. Mm. He reminds him he must kill Dennis Leary. <laughs> you should kill the actor, Dennis Leary, Dennis before Dennis he can do more damage. Uh, Simon tries one last time to kill Cocteau, but it's no use. Huxley says this wasn't bad for a seven-year-old, and then Simon Phoenix has finally met his meat. Mm. And, and you really licked his ass. Yes, right. She doesn't understand 90s. Which is another great running joke in this movie, yeah. is how she's constantly <laughs> saying stuff wrong. Like, she doesn't understand me. 90s expressions. Yes. You licked his ass. <laughs> you licked his ass. What? Uh, Cacto <laughs> is grateful for John rescuing him, says he wants to invite him to Taco Bell. Um, I want to have a delightful dinner at Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. <laughs> Just uh, so a matter of TikToks later, uh, they're on their way and they talk about President Schwarzenegger after passing right. the 61st Amendment. It's Which is funny because... 40 amendments? Uh, Schwarzenegger and Stallone actually do end up in a movie together, The yes. Expendables. The Expendables. Um, so Simon Phoenix finds his way down into um, the sewers. And he pops it open and descends into the San Angeles underworld inside. Uh, we go to the swanky uh, Taco Bell. Um, it's very nice. Cocteau raises a toast to John. And um, John asks for salt. And we find out salt's illegal, too. Salt's mm-hmm. illegal. Of course. Meat's illegal. Salt's illegal. Cocteau asks Spartan, what do you think of San Angeles? And John says he thought the place would have become a burning cesspool by this point, but Cocteau explains they're really going in that direction but he st- before he stepped in. John said he had, exp- he had been experiencing horrific nightmares all while he was under uh, reliving exploding building and is seeing his wife pounding on a block of ice. John said it would be more inhumane to have staked him down for the fucking crows. <laughs> Quite the monologue he gives. Um, once again, John spots a suspicious thing outside in the ground. Um, what are you doing, Dennis Leary? And then a bunch of uh, Mad Max Road Warriors show up. Yeah. We now rip uh, that movie off. John uh, rips off his kimono and grabs a pipe and beats the shit out of everyone. <laughs> um, and then traps him under a tent. Yep. Easily Can't get out of that. Him. Can't get out of a tent. Uh, While Dennis Leary is like, look at this fucking hero. Um, John apologizes for yelling at Huxley. He sadly wonders what life for his daughter must have been like growing up here. Huxley offers to use the onboard computer to look her up. Now, did it cross your mind at all that Huxley... Huxley was the Yes. (laughs) Yes. Especially after the weird sex scene where they didn't really have sex. I thought for sure that's what was going on. Yep. Yep. (laughs) first like, thing not? i thought Huxley. why not just have like it's perfectly set up that she's his daughter 
I guess in a cut of the film, she was supposed to be one of Dennis Leary's scraps or whatever the fuck they're called. Scraps. Uh, yeah. That did it flesh out, obviously. But it would have been mm. so much better if 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 Sandra You're Bullock saying... was his daughter. It would have just been it would have been a, this would make it an A plus movie. A plus. Anytime you add incest in, it's yes. A plus. <laughs> yes, it's A plus. Um, <laughs> Follow the Game of Thrones model. Just put incest yes. in there wherever you can. Uh, so Cocteau and Bob are home now, and Simon's waiting. Every time you say Cocteau and Bob, it's weird to me, but <laughs> okay. Simon says he's going to need backup and hands over a list of candidates, potential candidates to thaw out. Cocteau is so desperate to have uh, Edgar Dennis Leary killed that he agrees. Um <laughs> When uh, Huxley turns to Spartan and admits watching him beat the crap out of those guys was a huge turn on. And then she asks if they want to have sex. Um, In the creepiest way ever. She leaves for a little bit, gets into some sexy clothes, gets into some red mood lighting, and they both put on VR helmets. VR sex. They put on cone head sex. (laughs) (laughs) It's so weird. <laughs> I thought we were going to do it the old fashioned way. The old hunk of chunka. Me put my penis in your vagina. What is a hunk of chunka? What is we're going to do the hunk of chunka. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what move I've could never you be speaking about? Hunk-a-chunka. It's when I lay there like a dead fish and you just do your thing. So yeah, they, you flop they, around. She plays the love boat theme. I watch they, over the top while you do it to me. <laughs> Um, and they have weird um, VR sex. Um, VR sex that that he so freaks out weird. about. I like how he like. She's like, "You want to have sex?" He's like, "Yeah." Yes, he is right? so. Of course. Yeah. I mean, sex been frozen. <laughs> frozen. What kind of what kind of dick do you think he's got going on? Frozen dick for the last thirty years. <laughs> it's probably worth not just good. Fine. Um, he freaks out. And then he's like, well, why don't we do it the old fashioned way, the old hunk of chunka? And Huxley is disgusted and was like, fluid transfer? Gross. Um, John goes back to his apartment after she kicks him out, and we see the three she sells again. He's like, three (laughs) seashells. God God damn it. Damn it. (laughs) Oh my God. You never explained it either. But then the, the most absolutely random part of this movie the the, ra- the wrong the cd number, no the wrong number sex lady oh yeah what was that <laughs> what yeah. was that what, what was why was that there i don't know so like, you could have boobs in it i get i guess like why was that to cram was some that boobs in this movie after they're yeah. like freaked out about sex like oh here's a random dick who's obviously looking to have some phone sex or something it was just like that was face chat sex so weird um john then watches security footage of simon and on his very futuristic cd (laughs) yes laser disc cd looking thing um he then knits a sweater for huxley he was because he was taught knitting while sleeping um, because that made him a better citizen. And Simon was taught martial arts, torture, urban combat, and murder, death, kill. Mm, which you pair, already do all those things. Yes. The pair burst into Cucto's conference room and are confronted by a robotic video conferencing screen of him. They, they figure out that he's right behind this wall. <laughs> he's right there. He's right there. The chairs just turned around, obviously. <laughs> Because uh, Stallone shoots all the screens. <laughs> yes. Um, As you do. And then Cocteau kicks him out, wants him gone, wants him refrozen. And yeah. he goes, be well, John Spartan. And he goes, be fucked. <laughs> oh, best line of the movie. <laughs> be fucked. Be fucked. <laughs> best means, line of the movie. Well, I don't know. VR. <laughs> you put on a VR helmet and then you weird have a weird acid trip dream. and. Be fucked. That's how you get fucked. So oh, John, John, Diego, and Huxley go down into the wasteland. Um, she goes, "I'm gonna, you're, you're gonna blow this guy." 
<laughs> yeah. Jared corrects her. You're going to blow this guy away. Away. Right. Uh, so the trio reach uh, the wastelands. Their village. And, and, yep. And everyone's just like, what the fuck are these cops doing here? Um, <laughs> and then John catches a whiff of something that smells absolutely delicious. Which everyone else thinks smells like shit. Yep. Uh, but John brushes right over, gets a cerveza and a burger, and is in heaven. Which I was laughing because I'm like, if you're a cop in Los Angeles, how do you not know any Spanish? Not a single lick. Nope. Not a oh. lick. You that's half the language in Los Angeles. Spanish. Not after the not, earthquake. I, was I guess not. Well, was, he was pre earthquake. Oh, well, he knows cerveza. That's all he knows. He doesn't know how to say hello or oh. what are you doing. He was in the he just night. knows beer. He had no time for that. Uh, Huxley points out he was blowing up malls. He had no time for that shit. Huxley points out there's no cows down here. He nope. goes, oh, a rat burger. And he admits he's eating the rat burger and he continues to eat the rat he eats burger. The whole, he eats it the whole time. He loves he's it. He's a champ. So the tree are walking along, and then they see just out of nowhere a mint condition 1970 Oldsmobile. What? Everything else dirty, but this. Pristine. They're eating rats, but they got fucking sports cars. Yep. And yeah, that was technology that. Mustang. No, right. a 1970 Oldsmobile. An Oldsmobile, which is weird, but they also have technology that spray paint shit. Yep. Not shoots like bullets, spray paint shit. Then we get Dennis Leary doing his stand-up routine. This is literally his stand-up routine. Literally, yeah. There's no doubt whoever wrote or directed this movie, whatever. Go ahead, do whatever you want. Saw him, saw the stand-up routine, loved it, and was just like, just do your stand-up routine. Did it. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, so Dennis Leary had his... Where he years. like talks about how he wants great to eat, it was back in the day. Wants to eat burgers and be naked i don't know something smoke dumb. cigarettes and be yes. naked and swear phoenix is then uh we see phoenix addressing his troops one of them being jesse the body ventura thank you jesse for letting us watch this yes, movie thank you jesse. but having no lines in the movie nope zero lines but an important part very important part phoenix and company rachel's spot. watching me this with me and she's like Where's the wrestler? It's been like two hours. <laughs> Where's the wrestler? I'm like he's coming, I guess. So, um, Phoenix and his and his pals spot uh, Dennis his Leary pals. and John Spartan, and they take advantage of the situation and they begin open fire. Of course, uh, Simon, and then eventually, they somehow find an elevator that fits the Oldsmobile. The Oldsmobile mm-hmm. is then able to take the elevator up mm-hmm. through. A car dealership. Mm-hmm. It yeah, breaks. Yeah. Not only does it go, it breaks through the floor. Like through the floor, right through the foundation. Actually, through the foundation. <laughs> That's a strong ass elevator. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yep, they're chasing each other. Uh, Simon's in a cop car, and the Oldsmobile can't catch up. <laughs> and so, uh, yep, he starts shooting at the the Oldsmobile and uh John they, jumps John jumps on it. They fight in the tunnel. That's in, in every tunnel. movie. Yep. It's in every movie. Every this Los white Angeles tunnel movie. Yep. Men in Black <laughs> specifically yep. I remember having to fight in this movie in this tunnel. I think even Back to the Future. Yep. Back as to a the scene future. in this tunnel. Mm-hmm. Phoenix takes the time here to admit that all the bus passengers back in 1996 have been dead the entire time. Oh. Um, and John manages to grab Simon and flip him out of the car. And then the, the car crashes and fills up with something that seems like it would kill you. Styrofoam that would suffocate you to death. It would suffocate you, yes. Clearly would just suffocate you. Styrofoam <laughs> is so you. bad for the environment, too. If this is actually... <laughs> What their goal is that that's a bad idea. You're intact, but you are most definitely dead. You dead. Um you almost can die from like suffocation from a fucking airbag now. Yes, that's can you true. imagine being surrounded by styrofoam. Um the chief shows up and tries to have John arrested. Um 
Except for they're bad cops. They can't they can't figure out how to pull that off. Well, uh, Huxley tells him to take his job and shovel it. Mm. Um, so then, yep, and then what's it called? Uh, Dennis Leary shows back up with Benjamin Bratt, who is now that all of a quick. sudden a that road warrior. Quick. He turned road warrior in that two quick. seconds. Um, he gra- takes some guns from uh, Edgar. And they make their way uh, to what? Are they make their way to Cocteau's place, and he's dead. Jesse Ventura shot him. I can't do it. Somebody else killed him. I can't do it. I have a crew of flunkies now uh, that you agreed to defrost, like an idiot. So now I'm gonna have them. Kill how me. didn't he? If he's so like, how did he know this? How did he not realize that that was gonna was, happen? Yeah. He's an idiot. Um, and then they just toss him in the fire. <laughs> hey. And then Bob is like, I'll be your consigliere yes. or whatever. Yes. Like, I'm good. I'll switch sides. Um, right. So then they're... You have equally weird shavings on the back of your head, and so do I. So let's be a team. Uh, John dispatches a couple of the guys at wherever, kicks the crap out of them. Um, Huxley saves John by shooting one of the guys before he puts a hole in John. Uh, they learn that Phoenix is planning on thawing 80 psychos like himself, all without rehab, and they all will be awake within an hour. Oh, <clears throat> shit. But John doesn't want to get uh, Huxley in any trouble, so he zaps her, knocks her out. With that weird gun zapper yes. nightstick thing? Yep. Uh, then we cut to Phoenix, who is thawing out Jeffrey Dahmer, and Bob is helping. Phoenix pulls out an AK-47 and kills everyone, <laughs> but Jeffrey Dahmer. But but no, yeah. but, Bob, but Bob. He's very excited about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. Um, then of course, Stallone show, shows up at the uh, cryo pen, and you gotta send a maniac to catch a maniac. Oh, yeah, baby. A gunfight ensues. Uh, something like 30 bullets are fired and no one gets hurt. Not even Bob. Uh, John reloads and prepares to give chase, but Phoenix catches him in his claws of doom. <laughs> um, <laughs> Phoenix does some target practice on John and misses every time. But when the bullet hits a line of f- full of uh, liquid nitrogen, thank goodness that li- liquid nitrogen. That never um, goes well when you nope. shoot liquid nitrogen with a bullet. He's able to point it at the claw machine and shatters it, freeing himself. He swings away, but Phoenix drops to the floor out from under him. So Is John, that le- what? What's that? My phone. Oh, he's um. Oh man, you threw me off. Swing it, Sorry. Phoenix. Then grabs his laser beam thing, shoots, but it malfunctions and he smashes it and then just goes haywire. Uh, Simon and Spartan fight. Simon kicks his ass. And then all of a sudden the sprinkler system's on. You knew he was like, as soon as they started fighting, I'm like, all right, what's the most logical movie way to kill Wesley Snipes? You have to kill him by freezing him to death. Oh, yeah. Like, and just waiting for, like, how are they going to freeze him? And they um, do. And they do. So the sprinkler system's on, and then Phoenix is about to impale John with a spike when John strikes the ground, and the glowing blue ball hits the floor, immediately freeze affects everything, and Phoenix, who screams as he comes frozen, John, having snagged what's left of the giant grabber, swings around and kicks his head, frozen head clear <laughs> off. So, I was expecting him to get frozen. I was excited about it. But I did not expect him to roundhouse kick his head off. Oh, yeah. Which was great. And bl- the blood and guts that followed. Yes. Fantastic. Um, John, yep. So then swing, the prison proceeds to explode. Because of course. Because that's what uh, Spartan does. Demolition. Yep. Uh, outside, uh, Friendly and his friends show up with Diego, and so does the chief. Friendly suggests they get shit face and literally paint the town, but John suggests that the chief get a little dirty and Friendly get a little clean. And somewhere in the middle, they'll figure it out. 
And the movie ends with John Spartan and wow. Lee. And John Spartan, new president of San Angeles. And Huxley heading off for some serious fluid exchange. And how do those damn seashells work? <laughs> that, the number one question. My butt before we do this. Can I figure out how to do this butt thing? Yes. Before I do things to your butt. So do you, you must wipe with Bolt, like maybe chopsticks? Do you think they're like buttons that he presses and it's a bidet? I think they're or something. Yeah. It's like a huh? bidet? That's what I think. Yeah. No, I think you use the three seashell. You have to no, use I think they're bidet the settings that you you tap a seashell and that sprays the water in your butt. Ryan. Ryan's closer than you are, Mike. No, I think you use... You put an you actual put seashell in your butt. You don't Demolition. shovel your butt ball with a seashell. You Demolition shove a seashell off your butt seashells. and scratch the poop out? How do the seashells work? <laughs> um, so, uh, the biggest question for this movie. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> <clears throat> Not if <laughs> Sandra Bullock's How they the work was once revealed by Sloan in a 2006 interview explaining oh. that a writer told him you hold two seashells like chopsticks put gently and scrape what's left with the third... <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> That's horrible! Uh, Why would you ever poop in the 2030s? So, chopsticks, like I said, chopsticks. Use seashells as chopsticks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see what Sandra Bullock says. Sandra About Bullock. the pooping with the. Sloan. Um, red carpet for gravity. Well, think of it like a bidet. There's several prayers. You have number one, you have number two, and then Thank you. Up. It turns out the seashells are also musical. You can use them as little... <laughs> yeah, she's just bullshitting. That's she's telling right. the truth. They're a bidet. No. I'm going with At the, the premiere of Gravity, some fucking dick. Yeah, it was like, hey, great movie and all, but how do you use seashells to poop? <laughs> <laughs> what a life. There's a scene where Sloan has, and I tried. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oscar, whatever. Who cares? There's a scene where Sloan has to use a restroom. I'm trying to come up with a futuristic thing you'd find in there. I was having trouble, so I called my buddy, another screenwriter across town, as if he had any ideas. Ironically enough, the guy was taking a dump when he answered the phone. Look around in his bathroom and said, I have a bag of seashells on my toilet as decoration. I said, okay, I'll make something out of that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wow. think it's the I think it's chopsticks. You chapstick and then you That's clean, like and then you clean. people people dissect these movies like all movies so much but really it's a, just a guy taking a shit with a bag of seashells on the back of his yeah. butt. That's like the answer for everything. Yeah. What does the spinning top mean in inception? Well, he obviously had a top in his toilet and just spun it every time he took a shit so that became part of the fucking movie. Wow, Demolition Man! What a what a movie! What a I see the body of a turn literally contributes nothing to this movie. Absolutely like zero, including cock or whatever his name is. Cocktail. Cocktail. I gave He's also a famous actor apparently. I gave this movie yeah, out of five. Write? What do you think what? I gave it? What's the out app again? It's Letterboxed. Letterboxed. Out of you five, you gave it a four because you. Are crazy. What did I give it, Bill? Four and a half. No, you guys went high. I went three and a half. That's still three that's high way half. higher than it should be. Its average rating is three point two. If yeah. two and a half is a meh movie, then this is a two and a quarter. Wow. Wow. Like it was fine, but it was not good. It was a bad movie. Bad nineties movie. Yeah, this is a good movie. This is a fun movie. Fun super bad wacky. Movie. Fun bad movie. Super wacky. Which super you think movie. doesn't exist, Bill? No, good. There's no such thing as a good bad movie. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, it would fall in that category for me. All right, uh, who does that leave? I'm very confused as to where it should be because you stole Wally's show. So yes, I'm assuming Wally is not going to be here next week either. You shall just have to find out. Who would be next, to... technically? Uh, I just did the, the one before. So it would so be we... me? Yeah, I you. So. All right, we're going to watch Guardians of the Galaxy. Ooh. Starring 
Can I watch that? Bautista. Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. Starring Bautista. What? Number one? Number yes, one, not number two. Number one. Number one. You've never seen it, Bill. I have not. I think you'll enjoy it. It's a good movie. It's I think it'll be, fun. it'll be a good action movie, I imagine. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, very good. Uh, all right. That's what we're watching next, unless Wally comes back with something, but I doubt he's got anything. So, Guardians of Galaxy see. 1, starring Drax. Maybe someday we'll actually watch a wrestling pay per view again. I was thinking about that today. Yeah. Nah. No? Mm. It's not going to be another. Uh, I feel like the only pay per view the last two years that we watched is a, um, Joey Janelle's uh, July 4th show or whatever. Oh, that that's is. right. That's right. The yeah. only wrestling pay per view we watched the last two years. But. Not this time. Guardians of the Galaxy episode one or movie one or whatever you want to call it. All volume right. Volume one. Volume one. That's right. It's, it is volume one, right? Because of the one. soundtrack. Bill, you mm-hmm. actually like the soundtrack, I'm pretty sure. That um that I've heard, yes. Good soundtrack. All right. That is it. Peace out. See ya.